Hey, Amelia, we're slacking. Everybody is picked up except for us. I know. We're going to lose the race. Oh, man. We're going to late start and lose the race today. Did you find some Iowa coffee? I found some Iowa coffee. How is it? It's like the best cup of coffee ever. Ah, oh, that sun feels so good. We didn't have any sun yesterday, which was very nice. It kept it cool, but I am a fan of the sun. I am from Colorado. We get a lot of sunny days. So the sun is what charges me up. <sighs> it's time for another day. I'm excited. It's been really fun to share this with Amelia. I think she thinks it's bonkers, but in a great way. I think she's loving it. You look so majestic brushing your teeth with the Iowan morning sun. Woo -woo. Thank you, ground. Thank you, ground. That was a good spot. It was great. You ready to ride bikes? Ready to ride bikes. Let's, Let's do see. it. The sun is shining. Goodbye, Pocahontas baseball fields. Have a good day, everybody. Yeah. It may be early, but it's not too early for interviews. Here's my first one, my new friend here, Marco. What's Never up? Never too early, man. Never too early. Hi, I'm Marco from California, and I want to say I'm basically here at Rag Ride because of this guy. Last year was our first year, my wife and I, and we found out about this event because of Ryan and his YouTube channel. <laughs> and now we're addicted. We're back this year. We're going to be back next year for the 50th. And this is just an absolute blast. They just threw a huge party in Pocahontas last night and I did not get enough sleep, but I am so looking forward <laughs> to today. So our first order of business today is to find the gravel route. Where are you gravel? Bye, Rag Rai! <laughs> hey, GoPro! Most bikes on Rag Rai are road bikes, so they wouldn't be able to deal with this, but we can! Because she's on the 600X! Yeah! Do, 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 do! And this is a first for me. I've never done the gravel option on Rag Rai. I'm excited to try it out and have a new experience out here. I'm liking this Iowa gravel. It's definitely slower than pavement, of course, but it's fun and there's a lot fewer people so we can just kind of hang around and think about life, right? Totally, and just listen to the sound of tires on gravel, which is one of my favorite noises. Hi, Amelia Shadow. Hi. How you feeling? Fantastic. Love I it out like here. I like this open road. Uh, I'm, a, I'm more of an introvert than Ryan, but everyone is more of an introvert than Ryan. <laughs> um, so this is a nice break up a ride ride for me. Just like fewer people, nature, sound of gravel under the tires. All the good things. All the good things. Look at that view. That's so beautiful. So we don't miss out on all the fun. The gravel route looks like it does meet up in some of the towns with the regular route. And here we are. Here's all of our friends. Yee-hoo! Oh. Your bike's awesome! Thank you. Thank you. Look at that cool thing. So I've talked about how there's not great vegetarian options on Rag Rai, but they're almost always are pickles on a stick somewhere. And pickles are good for preventing cramps. Right? Is that right? It's actually kind of a lie, but we like to believe it. Okay. I was just a buzzkill there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted it to be a buzzkill. This is like the, the magic 
vegetable. Ow. Um, these are tattoos of all the streets that I've cycled. Uh, I got New York City on my right arm here, and then I have uh, Chicago here. Um, and I just keep adding to them uh, every time I visit. And uh, this ragbri route, I get all my ragbri routes uh, on my legs. So, what inspired this idea? Uh, I really got into these artists from Paris in the '60s and they would uh, wander the streets of Paris and make these cool maps, and I thought I could do a modern version of that. And, yeah. uh, I've kind of just become my life. It's called psychogeography. That's cool, what yeah. do you have planned for here? Oh, uh, nothing yet, maybe <laughs> maybe Paris. <laughs> That's awesome. So I've seen a lot of interesting bikes on Ragbrider, but I've never seen BMX bikes, and there's three hombres right here riding BMXs. What inspired yeah. this? Um, this is what we normally ride anyway, um, and I convinced two unfortunate folks to ride with me. <laughs> so these wheels are 24 inches, which, which is quite a bit smaller than, you know, a normal bike, and they definitely only have one gear, so that's why these guys are working real hard. Oh, Amelia, this house is for sale. We could live in Iowa. It would be much cheaper than Boulder. Yeah, a little cheaper than Boulder for sure. House for sale. We saw a sign back there for a historical marker. I'm a sucker for historical markers when I ride my bike. And we're gonna go check it out. So it looks like this is an old cemetery from 1858, or maybe 858, who knows? Everybody in this tiny cemetery died in the late 1800s which really isn't that long ago, but in a way it is a long time ago because they lived in a completely different world. I mean, <laughs> no technology like we know of today. And uh, it's fun to put yourself back at that time and think what life must have been like. There was definitely no ragbri back then. You enjoying gravel day? I love gravel day. <laughs> <laughs> I like the wide open roads and just quiet. Um, but it's a super fun option, you know? If you really, really like the crowds and that's your jam, then you always have the road. But for like one day of the week, it's kind of nice just to be out here um, amongst all the corn. Yep. And there's, there's a nice, it's just like kind of grounds you. It slows everything down. You're like, <sighs> because riding with that many people, you constantly have to be like looking to your left and to your right and making sure you're not gonna like cause a, a pile up, you know, but out here, that is not going to happen. All right, we just met up with the root again, and it's time to play Frogger. Oh, go, 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 go. Yay! 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 <laughs> Woohoo! We did it! You know, another thing I'm loving about this gravel route is that we're seeing real nature, not just cultivated land. Look at those wild trees. Woo. Look how beautiful they are. Oh, and look, a swamp. Yeah. A real live yeah. swamp. I think there are alligators in there? there are, of course there's alligators. So we've been riding by hundreds of miles of cornfields. I figure we should try some of this stuff, although most of the corn that we're riding by is not for human consumption, it's for animals. This is sweet corn. How's that Iowa sweet corn? Really good. Really good. I haven't had corn on the cob forever. So these Iowa corn people are really cool. They have a, a mobile truck every day and they have a little educational interactive museum in there and you come out here and the corn is free and they set up all week long. It's pretty sweet. So somebody told us about this grotto and we're looking at it now on our left hand side and it looks Fantastico. I don't really know what to say about this. Look at this. Look at the detail. It's like a bunch of geodes in there, all these crystals. All right, Amelia, give me some Catholic history. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I, it, it's been a while since I've done this, but I think this is what it is, is that these are super, super ornate stations of the cross. 
So you'll see Catholics who go around and then at each station like this, um, they say a little prayer, I'm totally butchering this. Sorry, mom and dad. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's like the most ornate one that I've ever seen. Uh, it's, it's pretty fantastic, <laughs> not gonna lie. Church stuff can be generally very ornate, but I've never seen it ornate in terms of using geodes and rocks and whatnot. You know, you normally see a lot of gold and, and things. Um, so, God, this is like the most unique thing that I've ever seen. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what this reminds me of? In Casa Bonita, the famous restaurant in Colorado, there's all these fun caves, Black Bart's Cave. That is the final station of the cross. And what do you do at the final station? I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Bad Catholic. Uh, but yeah, that's when Jesus is laid in the arms of his mother. So what's the history? How did it all start? So the Grotto of the Redemption was started in 1912 by Father Paul Domerstein, who immigrated here to the U.S. from Germany. And when he was 20 years old, he entered the seminary in Iowa. And two weeks before he was supposed to be ordained, in 1898, he came down with double pneumonia. And he prayed to Mary, saying that if she were to heal him, he would build a shrine in her honor. And he eventually did get better and was placed here at St. Peter and Paul Parish and started building the Grotto of the Redemption in 1912. Wow, and so why all the rocks and gems and stones? What was his inspiration? Um, so he immigrated here when he was 20 years old. So he actually took courses on geology in college before he immigrated here. So he knew how to like build rocks and like how to form them and where to find them here. <laughs> right on. And how many people live in this town? I have to say 900. 900. So yeah. this is a pretty big deal for a small town. Yeah, absolutely. And how long did it take him to build this whole thing? 80 years. He actually died before it was completed. So he died in 1954 and then his successor, another priest finished it in 1992. Right How many visitors do you get a year? Um, I would say around 37,000. I love stuff like this. It puts a smile on my face and even though I didn't grow up religious and I don't really know about any of this, I just love when humans get creative and this is the pinnacle of creativity. It's his life's work which just inspires me to keep on creating and it's awesome. What'd you find? A pond. A pond? Or somebody's pond. In it their looks backyard. tropical. Look at this blue water. I know. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. This feels good. Oh, that's nice and cool. How's it going? You're making friends, Amelia? I'm making friends. I found a new boyfriend. Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm going to stay out here now. All right. That's, that's okay. You're really lucky. You got a new boyfriend. I know, right? <laughs> right? Whoa. Oh, you guys are fun. Thanks for letting us swim in your pool. Yeah, thank you. Oh. That's what it was made for, for people to use. Right on, I love it. I love it. Love this Iowa hospitality. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course. Do you want to hear a little history? Yeah. Okay, when I bought this place uh, 60 years ago, it was just level farmland. And uh, the house that I lived in was kind of right there by that bush. Okay. And oh, it was a disaster. We lived in it for two or three years. And then, goddamn, I decided I'm going to build a new home down here, put a pond in here. And that's a boyhood dream. That's a boyhood dream. Well, it's beautiful. You created paradise, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for sharing it with us. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you for stopping at my place. Absolutely. Here we go. Do do do.
I love it, we're in the Irish town. And did you know that I am 75% Irish? Ryan is a very Irish name. Let's do it! Woo. Go, 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 yeah, 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 buddy! Hey! How we all doing? Yeah! What's up? Hi, Amelia! Yeah! Wash off all that dust from today. There's really nothing in the world better than jumping in water after riding your bike all day. Okay, she says she's a world champion obstacle course racer. Let's see her get out of the water. You can do it! You can do it! Yeah, one leg over! dead whale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, roll over, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> this might be the most epic ragbri camp spot I've ever had. I mean, lakefront property, can you believe it? Uh, it's pretty amazing and we had a semi hot shower hot and cold But any type of warmth in a shower is always very appreciated. Wait, I just noticed something Look at that oh. tan line. Yeah, that Iowa Sun is the real deal. It is this island that we're on is awesome I'm making friends with all the neighbors. I just met this guy named Dan and he has a very inspirational story. Dan, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm feeling great, man. I'm loving Ragbri 2022. This is awesome. <laughs> Love it. So tell me how you got here. What's the road to Ragbri? So my road's pretty unique. Um, back in 2013, uh, healthy guy, training, was a, a runner, trained for a 10K, had a stroke just out of nowhere, uh, dropped to the ground, ended up in the hospital for a week. Still a lot of unanswered questions, but I'd really been pushing myself uh, to run and, and do it. So after the stroke, I was like, you know, this could have really changed my life. This could have ended my life. So I'm going to continue to kind of go after these different athletic challenges. So from there, I went from a 10K to a half marathon to a full marathon to, to ultra marathons. Started jumping on a bike. My buddy Doug, who's on the Air Force team, said, hey, you should do ragbri. I'm like, how many miles is that? Um, so he told me, and uh, I thought, well, I'll give this a shot. So now I'm here doing ragbri, uh, trying to live my best life. How'd you have a stroke at a young age? Man, you know, 33 years old, it was random. Uh, I got up I got up for work one day, and I was ready to go, and then just dropped to the floor, crazy dizzy, just just dropped, and uh, I have no idea what happened. Wife take me, took me to the hospital, and I spent a week there, and it's like, I'm really scared. I, I don't know what happened. Is it, is it a tumor? What's going on? And they, they wheeled in the MRI and said, you know, uh, you had a stroke. Here's five infarcts. You actually had a stroke, and it was scary. I feel very blessed to be alive, very blessed to be able to do these things. And so when something like Ragbri comes up, it's like if I'm going to live my best life and, and, and go after this and really make a, make a change and really push myself after the stroke, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and your life, I imagine, is better now post-stroke. Post-stroke, you know, I'm married, have two wonderful kids. Uh, my wife supports all my athletic ventures. She's very proud of what's going on. I like being able to do this kind of stuff for my kids to look up to. Um, you know, oh, daddy's riding a bike. Oh, daddy's riding a bike across Iowa. It's awesome. So yeah, it's very, very cool. So Island Camp is the best. It's a great place to make friends. Look at these wonderful people. Hey! Hi, everybody. Hi. They just made bean burritos for Amelia and I. Thank you so much. You are wonderful. You're all from Missouri, right? Yes. Yeah, Missouri. So we've gotten to the point in dinner where we're sharing uh, baby photos, but this is not exactly a baby photo. Here we go. So well, who is this? This is Cooper. Oh, look at Cooper, and Cooper job. was inspired by who? By Mira. Mira, we love Mira. We do love Mira. She is a doll. And we watched the videos with you guys, and she's riding on the bike, and I thought, I think Cooper can ride. Cooper used to get car sick, but now he's riding a bike. Oh, uh, look at Cooper. So tell me, you have a dog with a really cool name. What, what's your dog's name? Doozer. Doozer. What inspired you to name your dog Doozer? You. <laughs> Watching your videos. I said, let's name him Doozer. Is Doozer a good boy? He's very good. All Except right. he doesn't like my friends. He doesn't He's like very, your friends? He's a very protective dog. Oh, okay. I am a big fan of this campsite. So is Amelia. She's taking a little evening rest. Let's go check in with her. <laughs> there she is. Hey, Amelia. Hey. Fancy meeting you here. What's up? How was your gravel day? It was amazing. It was lovely. I can't complain. It maybe could be the best day we've had so far. And we still have f four more? I don't know. It's never ending. Never ending. Ragbri is the song that never Ram ends. Ragbri is with you forever. Always. 
always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, good night. I'm not. I'm ready gonna go bed. party. I'm not ready for bed yet. I'm going to party. I'm Bye. Bed. See ya. Bye. Amelia, why did we wake up so early? Because today we have a century ride, actually 105 miles, and everybody else is waking up early. So if they wake up, we wake up. Yes, <laughs> that's how it works. When's the camping. last time you ran, you ran, <laughs> rid, rode your bike 105 miles? Never. Never, but you have run 100 miles. I have. So I'm it should hoping, be no problem. I'm hoping the biking takes less time than running. <laughs> <laughs> Did it. <laughs> what? What do you want me to say? You just look cute, okay? Okay. 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 <laughs> Gotta look good for Century Day. Would you like to do the honors? Yeah. Thank you, Ground. You were perfect. You were the best campsite yet. Yeah, definitely the best campsite. I mean, look at this. Lake front property. Five stars. So 2002. I'm guessing this is not your jersey. Not mine at all. Actually, my mother's. <laughs> so what's the story with your family rag rye history? All right. So my mother, back in 1990, went on rag rye. Found out the whole time that she was really tired for some reason. It was her second one. <laughs> at the end, she found out she was pregnant with me. <laughs> so you've been on rag rye since the your beginning of life. Yes. Yeah, I've been destined to be here. <laughs> that is awesome. And this is one of her old jerseys. Look at the style from 2002, man. We're repping it. Repping it. And this is your team right here. This, this is all is your my people. Team. This is hi wild. everybody. Wow. Wow. Hi, hi, yeah. Wow. Woo. Happy hundred mile day. Happy Everybody is up and at them early today, 100 miles. It's oh. 7 a.m. on the dot, our earliest start by far. And we're feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling good in Iowa. The weather's supposed to be perfect. Yeah. The cornfields are gonna be perfect. The pie is gonna be perfect. Everything. All these bikes behind you, Amelia. I know. This is so cool. It's a big, big line. Big lino bikes. Mm -hmm. With that sunscreen on your lips. Aquaphor, actually. Oh, okay. What's that for? Um, I use it for dry, cracked lips, but um, some people use it to uh, prevent chafing as well. Oh, okay. Wow. Multi multitasking. Happy hundred mile day! Here comes the pace line. Look at them go. Woo! Happy 100 mile day! Yee-hoo! Hi everybody! Get in there, Amelia, get in there! Come on, hang on to the back! You got this, pedal, pedal, pedal! Go, 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 go! <laughs> Look at that smile! Yeah! We're cruising! We're cruising! We got not really a headwind. It's nice and flat ahead. I think everyone's feeling good. Found the BMXers and they're cruising at a good speed. Look at them go! 
What's up, BMXers? There's my guys. Good morning. How you feeling? Feeling great. So this is a BMX pace line, huh? Well, it looks like <laughs> I can't believe they're doing this on BMXs. That cracks me up. Oh, and that just goes to show there's a lot of different ways to do rag bri. Different bikes, different body types, different athletic abilities, and it all works out. Go whatever speed you need. All right, Kool-Aid for a dollar. Thank you so much, my friend. You're so welcome. Did you guys make this yourselves? Yeah. Um, grandma. Our grandma did, but we're the ones who were working the hardest out here. On the That's right. You like seeing all these bikers come through town? Oh, yeah. this is fun. Yeah. I'm sitting up this every year now. Tanner. All right, tell, good. You tell nice. these guys Look at that. Look at those Kool-Aids. What's your grandma. name? My name's Evan. Not, thank you, Evan, so much. No, we saw in Colorado. What? We saw antelope, elk, and Turkey the tall. A moose. You saw antelope, elk, and moose in Colorado? Yeah. Whoa. Very cool. Yeah, and Dad about peed his pants because of the moose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who gets the money? You look like you get the money. Oh, you get the money. You could have three dollars. We only want one. You get a two dollar tip. What? Yeah, you get a two dollar tip. Thank you for this. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, how do you get your business? What do you do? Um. Well. I came, my mom came up with this and I thought it was a very plan, good plan. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we have another customer. Come get lemonade, they have really good lemonade here. I have not had Kool-Aid probably since I was a kid and that stuff is good. Snickerdoodle cookies. Mm-hmm. Right. Iowan delight. Breakfast of champions. What does Snickerdoodle taste like? Whatever you want to get. Cinnamon sugar goodness. Yeah, well, who made all the cookies? Me. You made all the cookies? Yeah. Wow, they're awesome. Thank you so much. With help from Grandma, well, thank you so much. Come get the best snickerdoodles this side of the Mississippi or Missouri. Come on, get your snickerdoodles. Give this kid some money. He needs to go to college someday. So we've got a Brompton here. Where are you coming from? Uh, I live in the Boston area. Nice. And you're carrying all your own stuff? Correct the mundo. Correct the mundo. And you look pretty cool too. You got some style. Uh, I lost my cool goggles though. Oh no. So we're cruising. We've already ridden about 30 miles in two hours. Very easy day. As far as the mileage goes, mileage is a lot. 100 miles is a lot of miles, but it's pretty flat. And not only flat, but even a little bit downhill. So. We're all good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yo, how you doing? You're cruising up that hill like it's nothing. Look at that, that's impressive. You do the whole thing on a hand bike, huh? Yep. That's so cool. So I found found a new friend here from Iowa City, but he's originally from Mexico. Mexico. And you know what happens in Mexico? Ole, 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 ole. Viva Mexico! Yeah. Viva! What's up, Grant? Hey, not much. How, how you doing, doing, brother? Great. How about you? I'm doing great. How many times have you done rag right now? Uh, that, well, I've done it 11. This number 12. Right on. Working on 12. Working on 12. Not working real hard, but I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love all your fun things on your handlebars. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I got plenty of stuff. <laughs> Keeps accumulating. What inspires you to keep coming back? Ah, uh, it's the people. I mean, it, there's just nothing like it. <laughs> there's only one guy in rag where I've seen do this and it's Danny. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Good Looking good, brother. Woo! All right, we've been seeing signs for slip and slide, slip and slide, and we found it at a golf course, Hillside Golf. Okay, we've got ourselves a backyard slip and slide. Looks a little dangerous. You don't want to go too fast and veer off into the rocks. Nice one, buddy. And all slip and slides on Ragbri must be slipped and slided by me. That's a rule. It's a new rule. They told me to get wet first. Oh, really? 
Always lube up. Always lube up. Always lube up first. Okay, okay. And then on this one, don't go too fast because um, there's gravel at the end. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, here, I'll help you. Here, I'll help you. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. I'll just pull you. Oh, he's going up. Here we go. Here we go. Give me your hand. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. All the way to the end. All the way. All the way. Good job. <laughs> you may not have uh, gotten very wet, but it certainly created a lot of laughs. <laughs> I've never been on a slip and slide where I can't actually slide down it. Thank God there's not a big crowd to uh, watch me die. See that? Oh! Oh, 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 oh! oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, not. buddy! So I've been told that this must be applied generously. <laughs> and it's also really handy to just clean my body. So this is kind of like a shower. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, this is the worst slip and slide in the world. Amelia, we have an obstacle coming. We do, I'm good at obstacles. You're really good at obstacles, I hear. High five, man. High five. Thank good you for an you awesome guys. event. No worries. Fun little obstacle here. We did it, everybody. Good job. Yay. karaoke. Moni Moni is my song by Billy Idol. Old Coots giving advice. It's probably bad advice, but it's free. What do I do with my life? How do I live my life? Find the job you love. Okay. When that 401k starts building, don't borrow out of it to buy a car or something that you don't really need. Oh, so this is actually good advice. I thought you were supposed to give bad well, advice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what, what should we eat for lunch? Ooh. I had a maid right just a little while ago, about two doors down on the on your left. Uh -huh. What's a maid right? Thank you. Ground up hamburger loose meat. Oh, okay. Like a sloppy joe? We've been seeing signs for a long time about the National Hobo Museum. I have no clue what this is all about, but I bet it's going to be interesting. So what is a hobo? So the conventional definition of a hobo is a person who travels to work. There is still debate though in the hobo community whether or not a hobo must ride freight trains or just be anyone who independently travels to work. By independent I'm referring to someone who travels independently of any company or corporation and basically does their own thing. Although people think that hobo history began during the Great Depression. Hobo history actually began after the Civil War. The first hobos were Civil War veterans who, they came back from serving in the Civil War, struggled to reintegrate in society. So they created their own social support network and decided to use freight trains to travel around and look for any work they could find. And then in the Great Depression, when a lot of people lost their jobs or were unemployed, a lot of them took to the rails to look for work they could find as well. Well, what we're looking at here is artifacts from past hobo conventions. In fact, when this museum was first created, it was a hobo convention museum. And then it became later a museum with artifacts of things that hobos wore. Some of the artifacts here are to specific hobos. So I came to the convention for the first time in 2004 and I just fell in love with it. And then I decided that I wasn't going to become a hobo, but I was also going to pursue a career as a traveling autism advocate. I am autistic and um, I got hired ever since out of high school, mile in high school, to go to various parts of America, including towns smaller than Brit, to, to give presentations on autism awareness. I get my hobo named the Pied Piper because I play the recorder. And I'm actually gonna play a song that is very well known in the hobo community, the hobo lullaby.
That's amazing. Yeah. Right on, yeah. yeah. Hey, how you doing? Woo! Right, right. <laughs> Thank you, Brit, Iowa. This is about the halfway-ish stop. We have about 45-ish miles left to go. Ho, ho. Are you ready, Amelia? I'm, I'm ready. Are you ready for more classic rock? I'm ready for more. I'm always ready for classic rock. Give me some Journey and Van Halen. I haven't heard any of that this trip. Amelia, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Today is the day of buying as much lemonade as possible from cute little kids. How you doing? Doing good. What's How long have you been out here today? Um, for hours. Yeah, yeah. a lot of good business? Yes, yeah. we've been, we got all, these are all from today. All these signatures? Yep. And who made the lemonade? Well, um... You can lie and say you did it. We did it. You did it. There you go. Right would you like lemonade? I would or love would a lemonade. Like, Thank you. Or would you like a mix of sweet tea and lemonade? I'll just go straight up lemonade. Okay. All right. Signed it. Doozer TV was here. You guys are going to be on YouTube. Yay. Yay. And your lemonade stand is like the most beautiful lemonade stand I've seen. Thank you. Um, it's a good one. His, his little brother and his dad made it. Oh, really? I'm, yeah. their, I'm their neighbor, not their son. Oh, okay. So. And uh, how many times has Rag Ride gone through here? Uh, once on, well, twice on this road that we've, since we've lived, since yep. we've lived here. Really? Were you alive? Uh, <laughs> it must yeah. have been a long time ago, right? <laughs> That's cool. It was in 2017 that the last road I went by this road. Nice. Well, I wish you both the best of luck. Hope you make a lot of money. And what are you raising money for? We're charity. planning on for charity at the um, for orphanage for people who are in orphanages. Okay, great. Right on. Thank you. All right, Amelia. Mileage check in. Seventy-five miles. This farmhouse looks like fun, so we're gonna hang out. You know, it's very tempting just to stop at every single farmhouse, but you won't get very far if you stop at every single farmhouse, just every other farmhouse. And this one's got good vibes, I can feel it. Juggling, throwing stuff. So we're Team Roadshow. Uh, we've been biking rag rides. This is my 21st rag ride. I've been juggling the whole time. And uh, so we do shows in the overnight towns. Um, and like big fire things, unicycles, and then we, we carry these around with us because they're a lot of fun. And we stop at places like Free Beer and Juggle, because why not? Well, the two best things in the world are biking and juggling, so that just kind of is. It's kind of <laughs> like, like being inspired to breathe oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a good throw. Oh! oh hey. That's awesome. You guys are rad. Uh, thank you. I love it. Thanks for putting a smile on our faces. Oh, for sure. Thanks for being here. We did it, everybody! We made it to Mason City! 105 miles! Right on! Hello, hello! Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Hello! Hello, hello! Oh, where did you get that lucky? So our new friends camping. Thank right you. Over there. You're the best. Oh my God, you saved the day. What? Oh, oh thank you, thank Cassie you. and Sarah yeah, and Aaron. Way to go. Five. We did it. We found a good camp spot right here, and look right there. Cool. The aquatic center. Iowa town pools are some of the best pools I've ever seen. They go all out. Very impressive. Who says 43 year olds can't have fun on water slides? Oh, God. Oh, my God.
Let's see if I can make it in. Oh, oh God. Woo! Yeah. Woo! 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 Woo!